first volleyball players ever on the show. So, you know, I don't usually start with this question, but let's go ahead and dive right into it. When did you fall in love with the game of volleyball? And Claire, I'll start with you. Oh, this takes me back to the seventh grade. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> one of my first practices ever, I played at the local YMCA for a legend from Holidaysburg. His name was Sen. He allegedly played uh, in the Olympics for one of the Koreas. I'm not really sure. So alleg- allegedly, like he. Well, he only tells bits and pieces of his life, but, like, he is, like, has every black belt possible. Um, He has studied, like, in the temple his whole life, and then he came to America when he was, like, 20s, and he just started playing volleyball there. Like, he said, after school, when he grew up, you could either go to the temple and study or go play sports outside. So he fell in love with volleyball. Well, in the seventh grade... I wasn't very good at volleyball. I wasn't very athletic. But in the local paper, it was like a little ad, and it was like, YMCA, volleyball clinic. So I went. You know what? I go up to swing. This is back when I had little rectangular glasses on. I swing my hardest. The ball hits the net, hits my glasses. They go flying. I'm on the floor. But Sen comes over to me, and he's like, do it again. And just someone having faith in you after you made quite a fool of yourself you're laying on the floor um I just knew like I can get better and seeing yourself get better every day there's nothing like it wow what a great story that was awesome (laughs) great story and Ashley when did you fall in love with the game of volleyball almost a very similar story seventh grade um I went out to try out for my middle school volleyball team I go you know playing I get cut and so all winter, all spring, I go to like college camps. I go to everything I can possibly do. And just that like work ethic that I built doing that really grew my love for the sport, I think. Wow, that's that's awesome. And how did you feel like that, you know, getting cut motivated you? I mean, you can't just lay on the floor. Yeah. Oh, you got to get up connect- and do oh, it again. Oh, well, connection. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the team chemistry is off the team chart. Is off the chart. <laughs> You know, that's what I'm saying. We're talking about for the show, team chemistry. But, uh, <laughs> all right, my next question is, you know, we talked about, you know, some middle school volleyball, but as you progressed, as you were getting closer to the college level, you ultimately had to make the decision to come to Washington and Jefferson College. So why did you guys make that decision? Why did you come to WJ? Claire, I'll start with you. Hmm. You know, I had a really good visit here. The campus was beautiful. And I was like, why not play volleyball? I honestly did not think about my future much in high school. But my parents pushed me to, maybe let's try volleyball. Maybe let's look there. (laughs) And I thought that would be a really good fit for me. And I have no regrets thus far. All right. Sounds good. And Ashley, what about you? Um, So obviously I'm from Michigan, kind of far. I really had a goal of going out of state. I wanted to get out of my hometown, you know, travel a little bit. And so I go to this uh, recruiting camp for volleyball and I met a few of the coaches over from the Pittsburgh area. One of them happened to be our old coach and she brought me onto campus. I fell in love with the campus. Been, you know, WJ ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people say, you know, falling in love with campus. It's interesting. Like there is something about the campus. Yeah, I mean, Old Maine, obviously, you can feel the history. Yeah. Even though you can also feel like you're freezing in the winter. And sweating. And in sweating the in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But my next question is, how did you guys get to know each other and become friends? Uh, well, obviously, we're both seniors. Right. So freshman year, it was me, my roommate, and another one of our seniors, Sophia, in a suite. But Claire over here was all the way up on the third floor. We were on the first floor. Um, we kind of thought Claire hated us, but that's just because she was shy. <laughs> <laughs> I am notorious for bad first impressions. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm working on it. Hey, my first impression was great, so. Uh, history has been made. <laughs> that is no longer a thing now. Okay. So, and then... Eventually, you found out Claire didn't hate you. And you yeah, her. basically. Uh, so cool. Claire doesn't hate <laughs> us. Um... And I did nap a lot, to be fair. Yeah, she <laughs> was so, like, sleeping. they would leave without me. But, like, 
I was asleep up there. And Somebody then we'd call yeah. her halfway to the gym and be like, Claire, where are you? <laughs> and she'd be like, oh my god, I just woke up. <laughs> and then run down. And look at us now. I know. Now we're roommates, been roommates. Awesome. Great story. story. Great like. story. <laughs> and my next question is, you know, you guys are seniors at Washington Jefferson College here. And one question that I always ask seniors is, well, really, really, you know, this question good anyone, but I think the perspective of seniors is super interesting. My question for you guys is, if a freshman came up to you on the first day of practice, and I'm sure they did, and asked you, Claire, asked you, what is the biggest piece of advice you can give me for being a volleyball player at WJ? What would you tell them? And Claire, I'll start with you. I would say, um, and this doesn't, isn't exactly volleyball specific, but I think that in order to be your best in volleyball, you have to be your best outside of volleyball as well. So my advice is just follow what makes you feel good. So the people that make you feel good, the things that make you feel good. Like I say this, college is your first taste of adulthood. You get to like finally branch out, do things for yourself, pick when you're going to go eat, when you're going to study, like your parents, Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they have a role, but you finally get to pick what makes you feel good. So follow that and everything will fall into place. Wow. Great answer. Great answer. And Ashley? I mean, I can't really follow that, but I think I'd have to go with what I already said earlier. Like, just have fun. Mm -hmm. These are like the years of your life. Yeah. And it's the time when you can do anything. Like, there's no punishment for changing majors or anything. Obviously, you have to read initial classes, but like at the same time, like, you know, you're not set in stone. A lot of people get degrees and stuff they don't all end up using. Like, exactly. you know, they can change jobs, you know, but college, you only got to have that experience once. So as much as I say that and act like I'm like super zen, you know, mellow <laughs> all the time, you know, try as much as you can just to have fun on a daily basis and enjoy, you know, someone was back on campus the other day and, you know, we we're talking. It's like, you know, you're not going to be around this many people your age, you know, really ever again in your life. So just enjoy that. Everyone's kind of in that same mindset of, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of terror about what they're going to do in their life. But, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy that as part of the experience. And, you know, my next question for you guys as seniors is, how do you want to be remembered at Washington and Jefferson College? And Ashley, I'll start with you this time. Ooh, um, let me think. I think I would be remembered as just, like, someone who you can always look at and see a smile. Mm. You know, like a, a light in someone's life every once in a while. Yeah. That's that's good. No matter where life takes me, I will with, with a smile. Mac Miller, R.I.P. R.I.P. And uh, Claire, what about you? Um, I think I just want to be remembered as like passionate in everything I've mm-hmm. chosen to put my time in. Simple answer. I like it. I like that. That's good. That's a good motto. I definitely remember that. And you know, this one is one I added when I had a lot of seniors on towards the end last year. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. So. Let's uh let's let's set the scenario here. You guys are in a college dorm room and you see your freshman self walk into that dorm room on the first day of college. What are you gonna tell that girl? What advice would you give her? And whoever wants to start can take this one. Um It's a, it's it's one that makes you have to think, because I, I would tell myself a lot, you know. <laughs> the first thing that came into my head, um <laughs> was Break up with your boyfriend. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I can think of. <laughs> okay, so uh, Claire. Claire. <laughs> Mine is also very short, and it is never cut your hair that short again. <laughs> okay, alrighty. So, did you did, have you guys followed that advice? So far? Uh, how's it looking? Fair, fair <laughs> good, it's looking good. And. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit, but. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Next question. Okay. Next question. Um... <laughs> All right. What makes a good leader? And uh, Ashley, I'll start with you this time. Um, I think it depends on the person. Like, personally, I think I lead best by example. I'm not one who's going to go up in the middle of a crowd and be like, you know, talk my head off and like lead you with my words. But I think it it takes a lot to do the right thing when no one's watching. Mm. 
And I think that's mostly what a leader is. Yeah, that's good stuff. Because, I, I mean, it's cliche, but actions are definitely more indicative than yeah. words a lot of the time, I would I say. And Claire, what about you? I think Ashley's answer was phenomenal. I also think that, like, I mean, we've talked our team, like, we've had some team meetings talking about what we like in a captain and what we think is best for captains and blah, blah, blah. I think, like, so true. Everyone leads in their own way. Everyone has their own strengths. For me personally, I think, like, I'm very level-headed, and I like to lead, like, being calm and confident in especially high-pressure situations. But I think that everyone, their best strength, they can lead in that. That's really good stuff to take in. This kind of leads me into my next question. What is the biggest trait that it takes to be successful in volleyball? And Claire, I'll start with you. Oh, um, I'm going to say resiliency. Uh, if you watch like volleyball, like there are balls that you think that no one can get up, and then there's a girl flying off the court for it. And I mean, it inspires me watching other teams get other balls. I'm like, I should get that. I can get that up too. <laughs> Um, so I just think never letting a ball, having that mentality that you're not going to let the ball touch the floor, having the mentality that you're going to put the ball away if you're offensively playing or defensively getting every ball up. That's a, that's a great answer. Great answer. Resiliency is definitely a big key. It's one, not surprising that it's definitely a theme when people answer this question. So it's definitely important to keep in mind. And Ashley, what about you? Um, I'd say very similar. You got to have a very level head. Mm. You can't you know, let a ball drop and then let that dictate the rest of the game. Because, I mean, volleyball is a game of mistakes. Like, everyone makes a mistake every single point. It's just a matter of how you, you know, work from that after. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And, of course, my follow-up question here is, what is one trait that it takes to be successful in life? Okay, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. Ah. <sighs> I am going to say passion. Mm, okay. Go, go roll with that. Roll with that. Okay. I think that if you're going to put your time into something, your time, you better make it worth it. Mm. You better take every opportunity, soak up every moment, learn, be a learner. Don't be afraid to learn. I think that that's another mm. thing, too. We think that as we age, oh, I'm I'm older than this. I'm not, I don't need to learn anymore. Like, I already know. But it is never shameful to learn something new to go back to basics like that is something that can help you so much but whatever i said passion that's what i meant and i went on oh, that's a great and <laughs> i think learning like honestly for me that's one thing i've learned because i was like i was like oh man college should be over and like you know learning and you know it's i love it but it might be able to do it but it's all i think learning and being a student is a mindset you can always be a student and you can always learn all the way up to the time you die like you know one thing that i love doing in the summer is like you know, just going to museums and stuff, it, it really helps me calm my mind. And learning, too, it kind of gets you outside of yourself. Realize there's a big world out there outside of you. And to me, that can be really comforting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And Ash, I'll turn it over to you. What is one trait it takes to be successful in life? Well, I was thinking, like, having curiosity, but I'm going to go with something else because that okay. was already a point, you know. Um, I'd say being optimistic. Like, you got to roll with the punches, you know. Mm. You want, you want to roll that a little more, or you just? Uh, I mean, okay. well, that was my second option. So. Okay, no, no, I, I, uh, I was, I don't want to cut you off. I got, no, I got no, some. Okay. Brooks is uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Brooks is for the day was uh, from Rocky. It's not how hard you can punch; it's how hard you can get punched and get back up. Oh, I like that. I, I love, love Rocky. Rocky. I love Rocky. Yeah. Favorite like Rocky. That. Favorite Rocky movie. I think I, I don't even know which ones I've seen because I just watched them. Okay. Like, yeah. You've seen Creed. Fun fact, um, the gym I go to, there is an entire room dedicated to Rocky with a massive Creed poster with no Michael B. Jordan on it at all. It is just, nice. it, like, I, <laughs> I love it. It's fun. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's an interesting fact. And, you know, we've mentioned it a couple times, the school part of W&J, and, you know, researching your majors, you guys have some, honestly, pretty difficult majors. So I'll go ahead and let you uh, talk about those. But Claire, you're a mathematics major. So what made you want to do that? And what do you want to do with that after college? Uh, the hardest question you're going to ask me today. Um, what made me do math is I like numbers. They make sense to me. For okay. fun, I play number games on my phone. 
You sound like my dad. You play twenty forty eight. Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them. If you check like like the hours I've logged into things like social media is at the complete bottom and like Sudoku's at the top. Like I I don't even want to look at my daily hours plugged into that because it's embarrassing. What I want to do. I want to find a company that I'm very passionate about and work my way up somewhere with numbers. I know that there is math involved in pretty much like every company, but just what and where I want to go with that, I'm not really sure. Come talk to me the week before I graduate. I might have a better answer for you. Hey, even, <laughs> hey, if you don't know, you still got time to figure it out for sure. I'm just really interested in people who are um, – who are left brain like that because I am I hope I'm not messing that up. I am very right brained. Um I took intro to logic and thankfully that counts as a math class. <laughs> it's a philosophy <laughs> class, but I am not a math guy. And I would say you can uh, tutor me, but I really don't plan on taking any math classes here. Yeah. <laughs> the and, option is always there. <laughs> yes, I thank you. I really appreciate that. And also on the kind of number side of things, Ashley, you're a physics major, which is from my roommate Julian, freshman year, I know it's a very difficult major. So what made you want to get into physics and what do you plan on doing with physics? Um, what made me get into physics? Well, so when I came here, I was between engineering and pre-med. And about three weeks in the semester, I was like, no, not pre-med. <laughs> so my goal is engineering. I'm looking into electrical, environmental, and industrial is my backup. Um, I don't really know exactly what I want to do. I want to... Make a change in the world, I guess, somehow. Okay. okay. Yeah. For sure. That's what's up. And she said electrical and environmental as your top option. Yeah. yeah. So what would, like, environmental engineering be like? Like, give us an example. Um, there's a lot of things that, uh, with, like, uh, urban farming I've been looking hmm. into. Like, vert I, like vertical growth. Kind of, yeah. Okay. But it's, like, you know, being sustainable farming, like, in major cities so that, like, inner city, you know, families and kids can get food. Okay. Because there's a lot of, you know. Yeah. Um, the population density yeah, in the city, exactly. it's difficult to get all those uh, people exactly. food. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. So I'm taking this global food production class right now. It's pretty cool. It's okay. pretty so awesome. So trying to yeah. feed the world and exactly. you know, whatnot. You know, <laughs> simple things, right? Simple things. That is awesome. <laughs> and one question I want to ask next, and you guys have kind of mentioned it, but you can pick a new answer if you want. Who is one person who you would say is essential the person who's sitting here in the studio right now, a person who is essential, you would not be where you're at in your journey without them. And Ashley, I'll start with you. Oh, um, let me think. One person? I mean, shout out multiple people. Go okay. for it. <laughs> I know it's hard. It's hard because like, there's I so many people know, who are responsible like, for each of us. My family and friends back home. Okay. But like my close knit friends, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, the ones who really push you. Like, without them, I mean, where would I be now? Definitely my parents, but that's, like, obvious. Who wouldn't be here without their parents? True. It's true. <laughs> Good point. No, yeah. For, that, that, that would be my topic. <laughs> okay, well, also, like, no, that'd be my, that, that, no, that's, uh, I, that's, uh, that's, that's my answer. And, uh, yeah, it's cool because, and I'll ask about this. For me, it's cool because I kind of have my group of friends at WJ, but then I'm going to go back to Raleigh. Like or top school, like that's a whole different group of friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's kind of cool exactly. because I'm sure you didn't know anyone when you came here for the first time. No, no friends, school. no friends, no friends. And it, I, I know some of the high school. Everyone like talking about their high schools, like North Allegheny, West yeah, Allegheny, oh East God, Allegheny, East Allegheny, whatever, whatever <laughs> it is. Like, so it's different. You know what I mean? But I think that's the cool part of it. I don't know if you agree or not. Like, oh, you have your Dub J friends, and you have like your at home friends. Yeah, and it's like two different worlds, but it's so awesome. So I gotta ask you. Who's your college football team in Michigan? Like, oh. Are you Michigan State, Michigan, I C mean, CMU? Okay, I'm not a big Michigan or Michigan State fan. I mean, I grew up being a State fan. Okay, go um, green. Yeah, go, go green, white. go white. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends go to Michigan. Uh, that, that boyfriend I was talking about earlier went to State. So, like, I think I got to say Michigan. <laughs> okay, Michigan State. Big victory over Ohio State last year. <laughs> yeah. Beat Ohio State. Yeah, beat Ohio State. Did it. And Claire, what would you say for your answer? Who is one person who's responsible for the person sitting here in front of me today? Oh, you're right. I can't 
cannot say one. I can say in different stages, I think different people mm. serve me differently. Mm. That's deep. So I could give you like from timelines of mm. age, age <laughs> ranges, but we would be here for quite some time. I think, I think it's because actually we were talking about this one night and we'll get into this a little later, but I think, and I always make life metaphors like a book. And I think certain characters can come into different scenes, come into different chapters. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate yes. it. My friend, uh, my friend Katie and Juan from last year, I don't know if you guys remember them. They were, they were seniors last year and they had this big metaphor of a book. And I always loved it because I, I want to be a writer myself. That's what I want to do. So I always like to think of things in terms of book. And sometimes characters are going to be through the whole book with you. Sometimes they might just be around for a page. Sometimes, you know, you got like an antagonist who's going to come along and help your character development. So for me, the biggest thing to always remember, though, is you're the greatest character of your life. You're a writer, and whenever you want to, you can write, you can change the wording, you can turn the page, and most importantly, you can create the character that you want to be. I love that. That is wonderful. Thank you. Write that down. Quote that. <laughs> Feel free to do what you want. So, um, That's actually my quote of the day. <laughs> great. No one's ever quoted Sam Stewart yeah. before, so that'd be awesome. Thank you. And... Gosh, my next question is, of course, I make millions of dollars doing the present tense. You oh, know. Obviously. So I'm going to give you some of this money. I'm also going to give you a free Saturday where you have no plans and no commitments. You can do whatever your heart desires. So what are you going to be doing? Ashley. <laughs> I'm going bowling. Bowling? <laughs> At the casino? <laughs> no, like the one in Washington. I love that place. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I, I think that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. What's your, what's your average score? Like 120. Like I'm so bad. I, I went. I'm not. I'm not here without gutters. <laughs> With gutters, I bet I could roll 300. Yeah. That's that's an interesting. <laughs> without uh, though. Wait, no, wait. With with bumpers. So are bumpers. you like are you like into you got like oh, the two hands to spin bumpers. like and everything? Like, no, no. I got a nice. I got a nice. Nice little. little a roll? I don't. I don't. I don't know either. I don't know. I'm not a PB. I, mean, I just go in my team. free time, but if I had, okay, only so, to do bowling. Okay. All right. Have you played Wii bowling before? Yeah, I got a Wii in my room. <laughs> if you want to play. No way. Yeah. Me and my brother. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if I'm allowed to say that. No, it's, it's all right. Go for it. We're living in the present set. All right, so. I would say me and my brother, we we hooked up the old Wii at home. We found it a couple years ago. It was like, man, this is fun. And we, we'll have like nights where we go like, um, we'll play like all the games on Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. I don't know if you ever got to Wii Sports Resort. Do you know, do you know Wii Play? Yes. <laughs> tank, What's your tank, favorite? Tank, oh, Wii Tank, Tank. <laughs> the like, the fishing one? The fishing one? The, cow, so the cow one where you... <laughs> <laughs> The one where you shoot the ducks? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I mean, good. I'm playing that later tonight if you want to come over. <laughs> yeah, let's run it up. Let's run it up. I'm terrible at weed. Weed play is tough, but we will have to we'll discuss this later. Bad. Okay. All right, I'm just going in the corner and cry. <laughs> but um, Claire, what are you going to be doing every Saturday? What I will be doing will be going on a very long walk, and then visiting my brother in Pittsburgh, preferably with both my parents. Okay, and where would this walk take place? This walk would be on a sunny day. I would pay for the sun to come out if it wasn't out, because money can buy that. Um, lots of nature. Mm -hmm. um, see lots of people. Oh, listen to lots of music. Okay, and what type of music you have listen to? All of it. All of it. Do you have a favorite genre, perhaps? Mood, mood depending. Mood depending. Yeah. It's like you like, get like the feel stuff, like I, Frank Ocean. Brock I just Hansen. have like. Like, I have separate playlists and, okay. like, liked albums, but I also have, I use Spotify, so I just have that liked, and I just shuffle that, okay. which is every and anything you I've are. ever hearted in my All entire right. life. So, I'm really into music, so I'm, gonna, I'm asking you one more question. What's your favorite album of all time? That's a difficult question. But you can give me, like, your top three. Uh, favorite album of all time. Or one or three or whatever. Let me think. Can I check? Oh yeah, I'll go with mine and Ashley if you if you want to hop in this too. So I'm gonna go. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna go. No, no particular order. Just I guess they're in different genres. I'm gonna go Kids, Mac Miller, my top three. I'm gonna go Nevermind by Nirvana, and I'm gonna go mm, 2014 Forest Hills Drive, J Cole. That's my top 
three very different genres, but those are the ones that I can definitely listen to all the way through. Do you, do you have a do you have an answer for me? I got a. I'll, I'll try to them. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Are we doing top? Are we doing top? Are you doing three of them, Ashley? Oh, I don't. I don't know if I can. You do go top three, three or top one. It's, it's I think cool. you top two. Okay, top two albums. Okay, the I'll do one. You do one. I do one. Okay, <laughs> Bet. okay. One of mine is Yeezus by Kanye. Shout out Kanye right. for real. Yes. Yes. Okay. You next. Um, Dirk Them by Tove Low. I've never heard that. Listen to it. My next one is Ladywood by Tove Low. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Okay. Uh, get on the Tove Low train. Okay. Me and Ashley are obsessed. Yeah, I got a poster coming. In what genre? What, gen- <laughs> what, gen- what genre is that? Um, I'd say like pop. Okay. Yeah. I mean, pop. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll check that out. I love listening to music, so you know maybe that'll be my come my gym. Listen to me and ride around in the stupor. Listen to uh, what is it called? Tovlo. Tovlo. That's the artist. Yeah. She's well. Okay. I guess you pronounce it Tuvalu. Yeah. Oh. She Swedish. is Swedish. Okay. That's what's <laughs> I got to take a trip to Sweden a couple years ago. Should have seen Tovlo. I- <laughs> It's a chance. <laughs> one thing I one thing I want to ask about though that you alluded to, and actually we talked about you know a couple, uh, this about a couple nights back is hiking, walking outside. You guys have a favorite hiking spot around here? I'm always asking people this because I love you. Okay. I'm trying to get over to Mango Creek. Okay, never been there, but I hear great things. There's Mango a dog Creek Park. Oh yeah. So I say there's two different. There's one where you can go up on a hill and like watch the sunset. That's very nice. Okay. There's also a little trail that's kind of you drive a little bit in the park. So the, there's this covered bridge. You, Go in and you follow this river as you drive around the different parking spots. Really okay. cool. And Who's then there's that? A, Mingo Creek. Mingo Creek, yeah. Sure, cool. You gotta go. I you gotta it. go. I love, I love lowering the windows, driving out there. The drive so beautiful because you know I'm from the beach basically, so I don't get to see the rolling hills. You know, I'm sure there's people yeah. from Western PA and Ohio like, okay, this is some hills and farms. Like, oh man, look at that beautiful farm over there. <laughs> but um, a cow. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, it's like I'm in a Midwest fairy tale. But um, yeah, I. I drive out there and I love walking and actually do a little photography on the side. So I like to do uh, nature Ooh. photos and stuff like okay. that, you know, super mellow. Right. But, um, nice. just, just being in nature. I just love it. Um, so Mingo Creek, Claire, what about you? Shop and save. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally, or Duncan. We walk oh. to shop and save in Duncan. So, Don't get over by Walmart. So I'm sure there is nature on that trail. Or There's, that path, not trail. But... There are a few blades of grass on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was not sure that. That was funny, though. That was, like, that was good. But, um... yeah, like, you think it's funny, but anytime you're driving or walking on campus, like, look outside. One of us is probably walking there. There's like, the a shop and save? Yeah. Or, like, or, or yes. Where is it? Okay. Um, okay, so from like, uh, let's say Cooper, walk towards New Res and just keep going. Uh, it's like you go down a hill, up a hill, down a hill, bam. Is it by CVS? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it's come on. No, it's come on. Yeah. All right. yeah. All right. And then we do walk to Duncan, but it's kind of like by. It's over by Walmart, that Duncan. And uh-huh. you gotta like. It's like there's like a high, like, I don't know if it's a highway, but there's a main road. Right, there. yeah. Yeah. Right, all the nurses hope do not try to walk to Walmart. We have gotten people texting us being like, are you okay? We just saw you, like, walking, like, by the road. Like, and we're like, no, we're just getting dunked. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> the managers do know us there because sometimes I, I actually order twice every once in a while, and they call me, and they're like, did you mean to do this? And I'm like, shoot. <laughs> we also have been offered jobs. <laughs> we have been offered jobs. <laughs> like, we'll so if I walk about donuts in a few days, I see you guys. Uh, Just know we're okay. okay. <laughs> Good. I, I... <laughs> what a great answer. That was your best ever answer to that question of what I do. <laughs> That's going to get brought up every time I ask that nature person. Uh, for I will say, though, on a serious note, again, <laughs> Cross Creek Trail is really good. I don't know if you guys ever Cross Creek. Where is that? It is about twenty minutes west of here. So okay. you go you go past your shop and save, and then you turn <laughs> right, due west. You know, and there's lots of those. Per- the first time I drove, there, I was like, "Oh my gosh, look at all these farms and cows, and it's so busy." <laughs> but the hills, and of course, like, I love going out there in the fall. But you know, all the seasons are really nice out there. You know, in the winter, you gotta yeah. appreciate it too, even when it's bare. That's when you gotta appreciate the beauty the most. You know. Yeah. But I would also say Cooper's Rock in West Virginia. I've heard great things about that. Yes, so I, I would actually I would check out Mingo. I definitely check out Cooper's Rock. 
There's like a main trail. It's like really short, a lot of tourists. But if you go about two miles from the parking lot west, there's another overlook. It's really pretty. You can see Morgantown, all these trees and stuff. It's cool. If you guys been to New Go- New River Gorge, have you guys heard of that? I've heard of that. Where is it's, that? It's so I I drive past them when I drive up. It is in um, it's not in Morgantown, but it's I oh, think I it's a it I think like it's south. It's south of Morgantown. Okay. So it's this big. It's the it's the oldest river in the world. It's called the New River, which you know I'm not sure why they named it that, but. New River, and then there's this big bridge on top, and you can hike like towards the bridge and around it and see it and stuff. It's like really old. It's pretty cool. So if you guys are looking for hike spots, definitely check those out. I also heard what's the one north of um it's like a, a falls or something that's north of here. I'm blanking on it. I'm gonna have to look it up during this break. I was gonna say I could not tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure. But my next question is so when you're not going to shop and save or playing volleyball, what other stuff do you get up to on campus? And we, I mean, yeah, we've covered okay. a lot of it already, but yeah, honestly, you got all that I, um, <laughs> all that you do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's fair. Um, let me think. I mean, I love like going to all our sports teams. Like, yeah, all isn't the games. Fun? I love that. So I'm, I'm, I fortunately got to check out. I got to check out you guys last night when a field hockey last Saturday, women's soccer. I haven't met a men's soccer guy to pop out and support my guys. Yeah, uh, you do. Yeah, Jacob, uh, my boy Jacob Lee and MJ who were on the show last season. Ooh. Those are my guys for sure. Um, obviously, you got to check out the football game. I see John Carroll. I don't know if you guys got to pop out to that. No, we always that's miss right. The you guys were games. playing, yeah. Always miss them. Press Pride, that's right. Up on the board there. Get right up there. Jump to Juwan. Jump to Juwan. Yeah, Press Pride. I love that. Guys, thank you for telling me so much about yourself. Now, I want to ask a few questions about volleyball, and I want to ask some like specific stuff I saw last night, but I want to ask first. So I, I, I have played beach volleyball a couple times. I want to improve my skill. So I know you guys are outside hitters. So how do I get better at spiking? If jump you... higher. <laughs> well, in the um, sand, to be fair, it is very hard to jump. Okay, I guess we need to go over this. What's the difference between beach volleyball? Obviously, there's two people, beach and Olympic volleyball. But how much of a – you, have you guys ever played beach volleyball? I I played grass like for fun. Okay, not like like competitive, there but like yeah, they're just like play a few fun. different rules though. Like okay. um, you cannot really set the ball in beach. You have to just like punch it up. Yeah. Okay. But I don't really know all the rules. Okay, but I knew it was a different sport. Yeah, I did some research on it. Very stuff. similar. But okay. Yeah. Cool. Little like nitpicky Little things. things. Okay, gotcha. And you guys, you guys ever set as outside hitters? Is that ever a Thing that you guys set the ball? No. Okay. Well, like, well, yes. To, but... to pass it to the setter, like, okay. to get the ball from point A to point B, you can use your platform or your hands. So, like, mm-hmm. if the ball comes to us and we need to get it to the setter, like, we could set it to her. Okay. But I'm never, like, setting someone else to hit right. on the reg okay. unless it's, like, completely out of system sure. and I have to just chuck it somewhere. Okay. And my next question is, you know, what do you do if you want to get better at digging? And for those who don't know what digging is, and I'm gonna, you guys probably explain better than me. It's when the other team spikes it and you recover it and don't let it hit the floor. Exactly. Basically. Yes, research paid off. Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So if you were giving advice to a young player about digging, what would you tell them? I would say like if you can get at least like a touch on that ball, a touch turns to a pass. Mm. You know. That's yes. deep. Yes. Real deep. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I mean, like definitely get better at reading. It starts with reading the hitter's arm where mm. they're gonna yeah. put place the ball. So not only like those hard hits, but those tips too. Okay. If they switch up their arm swing, you gotta go fast feet, right. put your platform there. Okay, and last one because I do love this. This is my favorite part of volleyball when I play, and I'm terrible. But blocking. Uh, Any tips for blocking? Press. Put your arms over and hold as long as you can. Stay up over the net as long as you can. Like, oh, yeah, so you squeeze can put your, your arm, shoulder you can't, blades. So you can't you put your arms. Touch the net. You can't touch the net, but you can put your arms over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what if you touch someone on the other side? Like you touch their arm, they swing to your arm. What do you mean? Like, like their that arm probably hits your won't. Arm? <laughs> yeah, the odds of that are low. I'm like over. <laughs> How high can you jump? <laughs> Not that high. <laughs> But, okay, thank you for that advice. This year on our Florida trip, I'll send you some video of you playing volleyball, you know, 
Regal Palm. Shout out to the uh, Regal Palm Resort down there. Dub- hosting Dub J Baseball every year. Yeah. <laughs> Florida, yeah. Florida Stew coming back out for sure. But another question I want to ask you is, like, you guys huddle up a lot between every point. So what what do you guys say in between points? Like, it's got to be something quick, I imagine. What do you guys, like, say, like, hey, like, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys say? Um, I mean, I think it's a really – it it – Volleyball is so unique that you get a break between every point. Mm. So, like, that's a really good um, resource to talk about, okay, this girl is hitting line. This girl is Mm -hmm. tipping here, like, talking about trends. Like, okay, or, okay, my outside hitter, there's an open spot here. Hit that next ball. So, it's, like, talking about that. Yeah, I guess very dynamic. Like, there are so many different things that, like, are said, and it just really depends on what's going on in the game. Okay. Gotcha. And one question I want to ask is, I found some research on this for the people at home. I heard some some guys on the baseball team asking say, "What is the person who wears the, the different colored jersey? What are is their role?" That's the sombrero. <laughs> I'm really kidding. No, no, no. That's the libero. Um, oh, L I B E R. Okay, I was about to say. I was, no, I was completely. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> don't, if uh, Aaron Thompson, Aaron Thompson asked me to call some games, so hopefully I don't I don't say sombrero. But I'm up there. But okay. Okay, but they basically <laughs> okay, just well. you know defense they only play in the back row they okay. cannot jump you know the middle line right and the back people in the back row can't jump oh across that line. okay right and cool. like swing it over the net i guess all right yeah all right all right gotcha huh. that's very interesting uh, that's a great piece of information now, now i want to ask ashley you've got a bag of stuff <laughs> bag of tricks per se so you're the first guest to ever bring anything into the studio Okay. So I want to know what you got going so on So this here, kind right? of, I mean, pertains to volleyball. Like, so we have a few pregame rituals. One of them is we love dum-dums. So what's your favorite flavor of dum-dum? Um, mystery. Ooh, yeah, mystery. good choice. For you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sorry. I did just chug that in. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I got hit, but, you know, the show keeps going. Another the press test. But for the camera. Okay. And then... Thank you for that. Do you have anything else in your bag? Um, oh, I got my swipe. I got. Okay. I have this little bag of crystals that I carry around just for good luck. Okay. Yeah, you know. What's the story behind that? Whoa, that dang, that's ice. No. Burr. 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 Ice in my veins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's go ahead and uh, break that down, rewind a little bit. Okay. So, you know, before I got hit in the face, that's a lot of what is the story behind the lollipops before uh, the game? Is that like a metaphor for something or like a... No. Okay. It's just, I yeah. mean, it's like a little pick They are delicious. Yeah. They're okay, delicious. okay. <laughs> and like everyone's got their favorite flavor. There are some wrong flavors, but we won't get into that Wrong now. flavor. No, we, yes. I mean, we, let's yes. go ahead and get into just it. Let's, guess let's, the wrong flavor. What is the wrong flavor? Yes. What's the wrong flavor? I... <laughs> root beer, root beer. Okay, I don't know. Correct. I... There you go. Root beer. Okay, <laughs> sure. Okay. Do you That's... like root beer? Mom? Okay. Hot take on the presidents. Root beer, dumbs, big no go. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what we do like. Yeah, though. I agree. Aside sure. from mystery, like, what's a yeah, delicious that's like... flavor? Cotton candy. Of... Yep. That's right. Yep. That is the most correct answer. Thank you. We don't need. We can end the conversation there because you have to end the show. I, he's the best. Um, well, I do have to ask about the crystal. What's up with that? Is that like is your story um, behind it? Um. Well, my uncle got me that little bag in like South America or something. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's like a little meaningful there. And then I just I love crystals. I love like the idea of like their. I okay. Switching gears. I would love for my capstone to be researching crystals and like hmm. their wavelengths and the energies. I think it's so cool. Interesting. Yeah. Would you? I don't know what field. Like I, well, geology. That's, that, no, that's physics. That's physics. Yeah, really? it's like uh, crystals. Like they're each crystal has a specific wavelength that carries a specific energy. Hmm. And I mean, like crystals, everyone talks about like how their energies affect you in different ways. Hmm. So if. In a perfect world, I would partner up with some, like, pre-med student and have them, like, mm. study the effects of these energy waves on the body, but that, like, probably won't happen. So That sounds for, like, my kind of thing. Like, we get some, like, candles going to be like, how does how your energy feel? Like, I love this energy. All right. So I yeah. brought some good vibes in the studio today. Okay, vibes. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the good vibes. I'm feeling the good vibes. Me too. 
right. So, guys, you know, this has been really fun. You know, one thing that I do want to ask, though, um, is, you know, for you guys as seniors, what is your favorite memory here at WJ? And we let's go, you know, we got a little time here, so we can go volleyball and then off the court. And remember, it's got to be like radio, you know. I was surprised Will and Brooks didn't tell some, you know, party story or something like that. But <laughs> off the court and on the court, favorite memory. And whoever wants to start, to start. You gotta give me a second. Um, oh, oh, I have, a, I have like kind of two for volleyball. Okay, go for it. Number one was two years ago during our COVID volleyball season. Um, one of my favorite volleyball players in the world, her name's Lauren Gill. She did transfer. She no longer goes here. But she shotgunned a <laughs> monster before our Bethany playoff That's game. That's how I, I run and through a wall. And we beat them. I run through a wall. It was so fun. <laughs> she <laughs> also cut, like, a volleyball. She cut it out and put it on her head and like, cut, like, a little ponytail hole and stuck her ponytail through it, too. If I was on our team, I'd just go home after I saw those things. Right. Like, why even Why play? show up? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Bison take an L on that one. So was, so that's those were the two together. No, or, there's another one, okay. but it doesn't even top that. So okay, it it really okay. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so good. I okay, good, yeah, good, good, good. And actually, what about you? I could see oh, you're thinking over there. No, I know, and that's the first one I thought of. I was like, I love that moment. Oh, um, little midnight think. conversation with Sam Stu, steps of old May, talk about existentialism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, that that was my favorite. Moment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, but volleyball, I'm trying to, I don't, I mean, when COVID season did hit, I did have to go into quarantine when our season started, and, uh, so I was on an iPad on the side of the bench, and, <laughs> and Claire would always stand in front of the camera, so all I could see were, like, the back of her thighs, so I'd say that was my favorite memory from volleyball. <laughs> That's, you know. She has great thighs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the, that's the story. Yep, <laughs> okay, that, that was it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, last question here, and then we're gonna switch up and get to our last couple segments. Cool. Favorite class you've taken at WJ and why? You first. I mean, oh, it's it's up it's up it's up it's up to you guys. I know it's a tough you have question. one on. I do. Go. Okay. My favorite class. I've ever taken here has been math 211. It was my first class with Dr. Higginbottom, who is my favorite professor in the entire world. Okay, and what type? What, what was the name of the class? Um, like what type of math was being done? What is that? Oh, it's like proofs. intro. Yeah, it's like intro to proofs. Whew, that was, sounds fun. Like my, I feel like it was like my first big girl math class. Like, okay. and I loved it. And it so, so, like, when you say you're a numbers person, like, are you the type of person who can just like calculate stuff off the top of your head? Like that? No. Okay, so you just enjoy like, like I'm not I know like a human people, calculator. I know. <laughs> We're asking. <laughs> so I know like I know some people like who come over to my side of the college sometimes like the philosophy column like and they're math people they they don't like how those feel if there's no correct answer. Is that like you something you appreciate about math? Because I know math a lot of times they appreciate there's like one right answer. Um, that is very nice. Mm -hmm. However, that is not always the case. Like you Jesus, get, how, like my dad, he's, he's like <laughs> you get like where like you don't know the answer or like a problem uh -huh. is not solvable for the time being, and they're still working on problems they're solving, um, or like you know does not exist is the answer of oh. something, which shed a tear, but you move on. <laughs> okay, great answer. And Ashley, what about you? I'm gonna have to go specifically my electronics lab. I okay. love that class. Corey Christensen, if you ever take a physics class, I love that man. Shout out. Um, basically, it was just super fun. I mean, electronics. Like, I'm just putting wires together, seeing what works. That's awesome. Those sound like <laughs> uh, very interesting classes. I can't say that I would probably do a uh, uh, passing grade in either one of them, but they sound they sound very interesting, and I'm, I'm glad I got to hear try, from you. <laughs> what you say? You can always try. You can that. always. That's, that's true. I would have to say my favorite Man, I've had so many good ones here. I like Dr. B's film form and genre, but 
just at the time it was, my FYS was death. <gasps> Who taught that? Dr. Wolf. Oh. Philosophy of death. Oh, another great class. Death and Immortality with Olga. I heard that's really good. It's awesome. I heard that is really good. I'm into that type of stuff. Great I class. I suggest if you have a chance to take it, take right. it. Gotcha. Yeah, I I I I I love that type of stuff. That's definitely like my side of philosophy. I took metaphysics about like time travel and oh, stuff. That was I love that stuff. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, that's right. Physics. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, that was I mean, I was there with Kyron. Kyron got an A, but I was I was strong. I, I managed to pull a B out of that class. But man, it was the stuff. But definitely I'm sure there's like some stuff we get like uh ship of Theseus, have you ever heard of that? Like there's a ship and each part gets removed until all the original parts are gone. So it's like all replaced wood. So is that a new ship or is that the old ship? Oh, well, it's kind of like, you know how your skeleton replaces itself? Yeah, so we're talking about stuff like, like that. Am I a different person? And we're talking about like, at a certain point, I really didn't care about that ship anymore. I just wanted to take the test and be done with it. I don't, I don't know if it's this ship, that ship, you know. I don't know. Um, yeah, metaphysics. I was feeling some friction in that class. Yeah, physics jokes. Whoa. Physics Whoa. jokes. So make me something inside of it. <laughs> That was a knee slapper. <laughs> yes, it was. All righty. So, girls, we have an interesting opportunity tonight for you guys. No one has got the trivia questions right yet. I'm ready. You can I be our trivia. first trivia questions. We're going to answer these after break. We're going to take our news break a little early tonight. But you have an opportunity to be the first guest of season five. We've had three guests, three shows. The guests have missed their trivia question. So I've got two for you tonight. Let's see if you guys can get one. They're for you guys collectively. So okay. we're ready. My first question tonight is: What was the name of the famed U.S. volleyball duo that won three back to back to back gold medals? My second question for you tonight that you answer at the break is: How many panels of leather are there on a volleyball? Is it A. Twelve, B. Eighteen, C. Twenty-five, or D. 28, you'll answer that after the break. You're listening to the present tense with Sam Stewart on 91.7 FM, WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR.org. <laughs> yes, no? I want to say it's, okay, the volleyball <laughs> one, is that the beach volleyball? Are you yes, beach, the volleyball. beach volleyball. Okay, I'll watch. Would that be like Misty or something? Misty may turn in. I don't know who her partner was though. Yeah, I, that's the issue. Harry Walsh Jennings or something. Oh, is that is that, that it? might be it. Okay, and then volleyball. So there's like three gold panels per section. Do you like map it out? Sides. <laughs> One, two, three. Is it three or is it four? Gold I think it's. I'm thinking of the bedazzled one. Oh, we know it's three. It's three. three. Okay. Three, three, three. 18. I feel like there's more than that. I think it's 18. I think it's 18 because in high school we used to do like we would take a volleyball and everyone would paint a panel and put like a little quote on it. Okay, hey, if you, I believe you. I'm so into it. Okay, 18. All right, we'll see. We'll see if you ask me the first I don't know about this one. Well, do we have to get them both correct? Or mm, just, just one? one. Well, it's definitely not. If it's if it's in threes, think about it. It, it would be only be 12 three. or 18, and it's not 12. I didn't know about that. I don't remember what it was. I'm trying to read his face. All right, so we'll do the, we'll do the, we'll do the, we'll do the, we'll do the trivia, and then we'll do uh, our quote of the day, okay? Okay, I'm hype. Sure. I logging back on. Logging back on. <laughs> the metaverse. <laughs> oh man, that was a great moment. I gotta clip that when you wing me with the lollipop. I gotta clip that. Instagram. <laughs> you got a boomerang that one. Mystery. Check? No. no like, but mystery how do you not know what flavor? It's probably. Oh, did we for blue rag? Did we? What, like, what color is it? Describe. I don't know, but it, yeah, I'll open it up after the show. Well, can you see through the wrap on what color it is? We did not blue. Yeah, it's green definitely green not red. blue. You don't have to open it. Uh, but usually, sometimes you can, like, see if it's, like, a dark blue. You can see <laughs> I always open them We have a 500 I'm... pack in our room. No way. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> we literally <laughs> dumped them out. We were like, we have to get one of the <laughs> If you would have said blue red, so that would have been embarrassing. Oh, because we did forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is very awkward. <laughs> if we take 
a, a uh, commercial break. Is... <laughs> 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 uh, that's fine. All right, 20 seconds, so we're back. Let's see if you guys can get it. We are back on the present tense on 91.7 FM at WNJR Washington and online at WNJR.org. My name is Sam Stewart. Today we are talking with Claire Sauerland and Ashley Berlin from the Washington and Jefferson Volleyball team. Before the break, we had our trivia segment. And now it is time for the answers. The first question tonight, keep in mind, no one has got the trivia question right this season so far. What was the name of the famed U.S. Beach Volleyball duo who won three medals back-to-back-to-back in 2014, 2008, and 2012. I'm sorry, 2016. What is your answer? Okay. What is Carrie <laughs> Walsh Jennings and Missy May Trainer? That is correct. Yes! Yeah! 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 Winner Yo! of the season. And let's see if we go two for two tonight, ladies. How many panels are there in a volleyball? Is it 12, 18, 25, or 28? What is 18? Two for two! <laughs> oh, yeah! Boom. Let's and go! I'll say, check it out on YouTube to hear the uh, breakdown of these girls' thoughts. Oh. They went this. But I'll say, they said, okay, there's three on one side, three on the other side, so it has to be a variable of three. I was like, all right, they're good. So they're breaking this down, breaking it down from a physics, math perspective. I'm glad I put a numbers question in, too. I didn't hey. even know really about but, guys, congratulations on that. Thank and you. now it's time, of course, for my favorite segment of the day. It's time for the quote of the day segment. So I'll turn it over to you guys. I don't know who wants to go first. Um, I'll go first. Cool. Okay, so this is honestly, like, <laughs> it's a great quote. I've been using it for the past few months. I have it written all over whiteboards. But it's just, oh, don't think, just do. And it's from Top mm. Gun. It, I mean, I always get stuck in my head. Who doesn't? But mm. that's another thing I tell a bunch of our freshmen. Like, don't think about it. Just, like, just play volleyball. But I guess it works for absolutely every moment of your life. Because I use it for absolutely every moment of my life. <laughs> that is a great one. Definitely one that I should, because I overthink a lot of stuff. That's awesome. And from Top Gun, I know we talked about this the other night, but you saw Top Gun too, right? I've seen it four times in theaters. <laughs> no way. I haven't even seen much of it. Oh, you want to go? <laughs> I will see you in a fifth, fifth time. time. <laughs> did, they play, did they play Highway to the Dig? Is that, like, you know the I, song in the I first one? I want to say yes, but I could be wrong. Cool. That's going to be awesome. I got to check that out. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard really good things about it, though. I do love movies. Is that your favorite movie of all time? Right Talk now, one. yes. Top Gun 2 or Top Gun 1? 2. 2. Yes, I mean, wow. tell her. Okay. Wow. Got to go check it out. And, Claire, what's your quote of it? My quote of the day is... From my dad, and it is sometimes you just gotta shock them. And what that means to me is just because everyone assumes you're something, you are the only person that is in control of what you're gonna do next. So you write your own path. Like people thinking you're gonna go left, go right. Who cares? Especially this year with volleyball, like our record last year. Okay, let's win then. Let's literally win it. Let's shock them. Let's shock them, baby. Wow, that is a great quote. I love that one. Thank, thank you so much for those. And I don't usually read one, but you know, actually, our conversation the one night um, did give me some inspiration. I like how you're talking about smiling. I already kind of referenced Mac Miller. Uh, no matter what, it takes me fine with a smile. And I just want to say, you know, we said it earlier, but RIP to Mac. And I got to take a really cool little adventure this weekend. I, I did it for myself. Uh, I got to all the sites, went to IP Labs and Blue Slide Park and Frick Park. It was really fun. And you know, his music helped me out a lot, but. With this in mind, and, you know, actually, like I said, this conversation we had at Old Bay, and I was talking about the book metaphor, and he goes, yeah, there's 7 billion books out there we got to read. And it's like, whoa. I was like, existential thoughts going off. And, you know, same about Mac and that quote. And I thought, thought about another musician that we lost to early, Kurt Cobain. And this quote kind of reminded me of what you said that night, and I wanted to read it tonight. Wanting to be someone else is a waste of who you are. Kurt Cobain. I love that a lot. That's so good. Thanks. I mean, I am actually doing a project on Kurt Cobain. He's one of my favorite um, 
musicians of all time. I love Nirvana. Like I said, never mind. Top three album, me personally, all time. And, you know, whenever things happen in life, we kind of question who we are as people. We wish we could be someone else. But the beauty of it is we can write that character that we are. We can change that character at all times. And one thing that I've learned a lot in these two, I'm sorry, three years now is, you know, just be yourself. And if, you know, people don't want to hang around you, that's their loss. And people will respect authenticity. So be yourself, go out, and don't be afraid to go just do things. Live a little, you know, Matthew McConaughey. Just got to keep living. L-I-V-I-N. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But, yeah, to reference another movie, Days and Confused, great movie. But that's kind of my quote for the night, something to keep in mind. Always be yourself. I'd rather, another Kirk Cobain quote, I'd rather be uh, hated for who I am and loved for who I am not. So be authentic. And Claire, like you said, you have the ability to choose anything you want to do in college. So go do it, live, and go have some fun. And shock them. Shock them. Shock them. Yeah, I love that. Shout out, Dad. Live Shout out to Claire's dad. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for coming on tonight. This has been so much fun. I've had a lot of laughs, and I've learned a lot as well. Two great quote of the days. Um, and thank you for just, you know, sharing your stories. I really appreciate that. Like I said, I really appreciate you guys coming on tonight. It's been awesome to be this on. This is so fun. If you ever want us back, like. I'd have to make it happen. Just to text away. All right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was really glad to meet you guys. I'm glad you guys came on. So I'm glad you had fun. And thank you for coming on again. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, everybody. So that was the present tense for tonight. Next week, we've got Jackie Flesher and Kendall Obley coming on the show. That's going to be a makeup show. Tuesday and then Thursday we've got Sam Vesa and Jaron from the football team coming on the show. That is going to be two big shows next week. Make sure you check out these ladies as they take on uh, Oswego State and Fredonia this weekend. Football team's got a game against St. Vincent. Soccer's got a game at home against Capital, I believe. So make sure you check out all those presents sporting events and make sure you follow the present tense W and on Instagram. Stay up to all the content and clips we've got coming from these upcoming episodes. Well, we'll be back next Tuesday at 8, like I said. But until then, everyone have a great night. Remember to live in the present sense.